Well, Peter, here we are. The championship game on Championship Sunday. Welcome to the 2020 Illinois Lutheran Girls State Basketball Tournament. As I was saying, this is the championship game between the not once, not twice, not three time, but four time defending champion, the Bobcats from Emmanuel Palatine and the Titans from Nashville, Oakville. My name's Ryan Roth. I'll be doing your play-by-play -play alongside my esteemed colleague, Peter Roth. And Peter, the bracket came to fruition today. We got the one seed versus two seed in the championship, and we had the three seed and the four seed in the semi, in the third place game. Uh, if the first two games were any indication, we're going to have a low scoring. <laughs> it's going to be a defensive game. battle. It's going to be a defensive battle, and the team that plays better defense will come out ahead. Uh, first off, shout out to the seeding committee. Did a great job this year, as you said. Top four seeds fell right into place. Well done on, on their part. Uh, secondly, I mean, consistently, we've seen Palatine win games on defense the last four years running in this championship game. I would expect no different. Um, and Nashville Oakville has allowed a total of 54 points through three games for an average of 18. So I would be highly surprised if our trend of defense winning championships would change from our first two games. So the Bobcats come to this game after defeating Bethel Morton on Friday, 45-22. Trini Bloomington yesterday morning at 39-16 and defeating Rockford Lutheran in the semis, 42-27. Nashville Oakville comes to this game after defeating Yorkville Cross 38-13 on Friday. Trini Edwardsville 34-23 Saturday morning. And Mount Prospect 21-18 in the semis. Let's go, go down to PA dress announcer Andy Fritz with the starting lineup. Pick here, buddy. I need a pick. Titans or Bobcats? Good afternoon. On behalf of the Lutheran Sports Association of Illinois, I'd like to welcome you to St. Peter Lutheran School in Arlington Heights and the girls' championship game for the state of Illinois. We would like to welcome our guests from around the world watching us on the internet at luthsports.org and thank our partners at Concordia University of Chicago for providing our broadcast today. This game will be available for replay on the LSA's YouTube channel at the end of March following the National Basketball Tournament. We would like to take, time, take this time this opportunity to recognize our host schools, Emmanuel Crystal Lake, St. John's Lombard, Trinity Roselle, and our friends here at St. Peter Arlington Heights. We would like to thank all of them for their time and effort and use of their facilities throughout the weekend. Before we begin, we would ask that all participants and spectators conduct themselves in a God-pleasing manner before, during, and after this basketball game. The LSA Sportsmanship Award will be presented this weekend to the school whose behavior of its players, coaches, and fans best demonstrate Christian sportsmanship. At this time, we'd like to begin with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, as we are about to begin this state championship game, we thank you for all you have done for us. We thank you for the ministry of Lutheran churches and schools and for pastors and teachers. We thank you for the abilities and gifts you have given each of the participants in this game. But most importantly, we thank you during this Lenten season that you sent your son to suffer on our behalf. We ask that you would bless this game and its participants, coaches, and officials. Watch over them and keep them safe because it's in Jesus' name we pray and play. Amen. This game will be between the guests on the scoreboard, the Bobcats of Palatine Emanuel. Yeah. 
And the home team on the scoreboard, the Titans of Nashville, Oakville, Trinity, St. John's, Emmanuel. At this time, let's meet the participants for the championship game. First, for Palatine Emanuel. The Bobcats enter this contest with a record of 26 wins and six losses. And on their road to the state championship game, they were crowned the champions of the Geneva Feeder Tournament, the Ray Mar Knights of Columbus Tournament, the Elmhurst Airborne Feeder Tournament, the ILS Bobcat Tip-Off Classic, the Prince of Peace Tournament, and the Hales Corners Tournament. Here at State, the Bobcats have defeated Morton Bethel 45-22, Bloomington Trinity 39-16, and Rockford Lutheran 42-27. Now let's go ahead and meet the non-starters for the Bobcats. Number one, Cassidy Rowe. Number five, Grace Riker. Number 10, Brooklyn Luna. Number 13, Gloria Lee. Number 21, Addie Luna. Number 22, Georgia Rowe. And number 23, Rachel Roberts. Number 44, Anya Rupal. And number 52, Christina Tierney. And now the starters for the Bobcats. Number four, a five foot four eighth grade guard, Frankie Henderson. Number 11, a five six guard, seventh grader, Coco Erlocker. Number 12, five foot four, seventh grade guard, Kayla White. Number 14, a five five, eighth grade guard, Rachel Lind. And number 34, five nine, eighth grade center, Kaylee Campbell. The Bobcats are coached by Heather Glazier, and she is assisted by T.R. Turner and Jim Beckley. Now for Nashville Oakville. They enter the contest of a record of 34 and two. On their road to the state championship game, they were crowned the champions of the Pinckneyville 204 Invitational Tournament, the TSJILS All Lutheran Tournament, the SIJHSAA Regional, and the Trinity Springfield Invitational. Here at state, the Titans defeated Yorkville Cross 38 to 13. Edwardsville Trinity 34-23, and Mount Prospect St. Paul 21-18. Let's go ahead now and meet the non-starters for the Titans. Number two, McKenna Westland. Number 23, Samantha Brinkman. Number 25, Christina Gussman. Number 34, Summer Brinkman. And number 35, Madison Gogolak. And now the starters for the Titans. Eighth grader, 5'9 forward. Number 20, Mallory Benning. And eighth grader, 5'6 guard, number 22, Raylan Obermeyer. Number 30, 5'4 eighth grade guard, Keegan Renth. Number 32, a 5'5 seventh grade guard, Lexi Welts. And number 42, a 5'10", 8th grade center, Nora Wood. 
The Titans are coached by Joseph Kirby, and he is assisted by Sean Renf and Dylan Fullerton. God's blessings to both teams. All right, Peter. Starting for the fourth time, defending champion Bobcats. Number four, Frankie Henderson. Number 11, Coco Urlacher. 12, Kayla White. 14, Rachel Lind. And 34, Kaylee Campbell. And for the number one ranked Titans, number 20, Mallory Benning. 22, Raylan Obermeyer. 30, Keegan Runt. 32, Lexi Welt. And 42, Nora Wood. <coughs> Bobcats in the all black. Titans in all white. Girls State Championship. Peter Roth, are you ready? I am ready. Ryan, are you ready? Here we go. And right away, the tip starts off with the Bobcats. Right. Bob man to man defense set up by, actually, excuse me, extended zone defense set up by the Titans. Bobcats offense focuses on number 11, Erlacher, number 34, Campo, the two leading scorers in this tournament. And we're going to have our early. first violation. And right away, two quick substitutions for the Titans as number 23, Samantha Brinkman, and number 34, Summer Brinkman, checking the game. Twin fifth graders. So, so Titans very, very young. So fresh, the usual pressure defense set up by the Bobcats. So this is a rematch from the championship game from two years ago where the Bobcats pressure dominated the Renegarby led Titans and then a poor pass. So two turnovers for two possessions for the Bobcats. But as I was saying, this is a rematch, pretty much same situation where Titans were number one seed, Bobcats were number two, and the pressure defense forced I mean, any any championship game that involves Palatine, basically the same story, but you are right, on, right on the money there. Nashville Elkville had troubles with that pressure two years ago. We'll see if they can handle it this year. I, I mean, if they can take this defense on, they should be able to pull away and win this game. Easier said than done, though, right, Ryan? And a wide open, no good for Brinkman, but rebound is in and out. And here comes the rocker. So Benning and Erlocker coast to coast and good. Coco Erlocker, this younger sister of last year's MVP, Casey Erlocker, and we're gonna have a traveling violation on the Titans. Similar to last year, the pressure from Palatine getting Nashville Oakville to move, or two years ago, excuse me. The pressure defense forcing the Titans to move too quick. Uh, has two quick turnovers as a result. And a poor pass. Brinkman down to a wide open Obermeyer for two and good. And just like that, the game is tied at two with 4.20 to go in this first quarter. And that's something we didn't see from the last matchup between these two teams was pressure put up by Nashville Okabe. Erlocker gets the ball right back in and out. And a strong rebound by Brinkman and Brinkman's pushing. Brinkman takes it all the way to the hole and good. Summer Brinkman, the five foot three fifth grader, lays it in and the Titans up two at four to two. I have a feeling we're gonna be saying a lot of both Brinkman's names this year and in the next three years to come, Ryan. Erlocker gets the ball stolen away and Be Benning and, oh, we're gonna actually, oh, Peter oh. almost got hit with the ball there. Right in your face action over here in the uh, broadcaster's booth, right? Ober, the, the look that Obermeyer gave Peter after she uh, almost hit him with the ball was like, I want this championship game. The foul is on Frankie Henderson. And Obermeyer keeps pushing. Henderson's all over. Oop. And the ball is going to go off of Erlocker. Good help there by Erlocker to step in and cut off the drive. Four early turnovers for Palatine right now. That's, that's the difference in this game. I'll be at two points. But got to get those under control as this game goes on. Brinkman gets, throws the poor pass. Henderson with the steal, and Henderson wants to push. Henderson's going to get fouled on the floor. And it looks like that foul is going to be on number 23, Samantha Brinkman. Her first foul, team's first. Bobcats with the ball underneath their own basket. Frenetic pace so far in this game. Not something I expected to see from two teams that focus on defense, but... 
fun three. nonetheless. Three point attempt is long for Lynn. Campbell tracks it down. The other thing we've seen as this uh, day has played out so far, I the rebounding is coming huge, offensive rebounding especially, and we're seeing Palatine crash the boards hard here early in the first. Kayla White for three, and Kayla White's got a three. Kayla White with her first basket of the game and puts them back on top by one at five to four. And we're gonna have a blocking foul. It looks like that one is gonna be on number 14, Rachel Lind. So that's her foul, team second. But you can you can tell that the Bob, the Titans are starting to get, you know, a little a little frenetic with that uh, pressure defense by the Bobcats. That's exactly what Palatine does to all their opponents year after year. It's consistency with that pressure defense and getting teams to move too quick and out of control. And That's here's Brinkman. Brinkman takes it right at Erlacher, up in and out. Strong rebound by Kaylee Campbell. Great defense by Erlacher there to stay straight up, take the contact, and cause the miss. So 5-4 is your score. Bobcats with the lead. 2.30 to go on this first quarter. Oak Erlacher with the uh, pass, and we're gonna have a foul. It looked like a shot right away, <laughs> Peter, but Campbell with the good post up, and she's gonna go to the line for two. I think the intent was a pass that, yeah, like you said, looked like it was going up to the rim. So that foul was on Benning, her first team second. I, I think we do give it the pass. I don't think it was a shot. Yeah, uh, I agree. Nice, nice first free throw by Kaylee Campbell. She's been shooting 7% from the free throw line so far in this tournament, now 8 for 11. But as a team, the Bobcats, one of the better free throw shooting teams in the tournament, 58% versus the 36%, that is the Titans. Yeah, the and Titans have one uh, Achilles heel so far this, this weekend. It's been from the free throw line, leaving a lot of points there. And we're going to have a blocking foul on Lynn. So that's going to be Lynn's second foul. The Bobcats don't go extreme, you know, unlike previous years, the Bobcats don't go extremely deep. So number 13, Gloria, the, Gloria Lee, the seventh grader, checks into the game. I mean, this is, uh, Gloria Lee is a great six man as we're going to potentially see. And, and we're going to have an offensive foul on Obermeyer. But going back to that substitution, Gloria Lee is one of the best six men in this tournament. She's, she's averaging over four points a game. She scored nine in one of the Palatine wins yesterday. Um, definitely a good spark plug to have off the bench. Brinkman is all over Henderson. So that, and then Gloria Lee drops the ball out of bounds. But that last foul, that offense foul was on Obermeyer. So three to three in team fouls. Full court pressure picked right out. Obermeyer's got room. Obermeyer's pushing. Ober. Obermeyer smartly brings it back out, but she's got an open look for three. Short, but nobody boxes out. Brinkman up and good. Summer Brinkman now with four points in this game, and the, lead, and the game is tied again at six. Right place, right time there for Brinkman on that and rebound. Erlocker somehow gets it back out. Henderson down to, Ro to Campbell. We'll find Erlocker wide open. She's going to get fouled. Nice extra pass from Lee to Erlocker. And Erlacher's going to go to the free throw line for two. Good court vision there by Lee to see Erlacher wide open on the block. So now Obermeyer just picked up her second foul. So Obermeyer and Lind with two fouls each. So we got some early foul trouble on, this, on each side. Haven't seen that much in any of our games previous today so far, Ryan. It's definitely a storyline to keep track of. So checking, checking back in the game for the Titans was Lexi Welt. And... Made free throw was good by Coco Erlocker. She's got four points for the game now, and the lead's back up two at eight to six. Nice effort there by Kayla White, knocking the ball out of bounds. This pressure, it's, I mean, year after year, it's what we talk about basically this entire yeah. championship Urlacher game. Erlocker with the again. steal, Erlocker in and out. Obermeyer with the rebound, and we're gonna have a smart foul there on Gloria Lee as Obermeyer had the room to run. You're right, Brad, that was a good foul. Forcing another out of bounds. And we're gonna have a foul, uh, looks like we're gonna have a moving screen. The uh, sixth turnover so far for Nashville Oakville. So that, it looks like that foul is gonna be on Summer Brinkman. That's her first, it was on the moving screen. 
her first foul, team's fifth. We may see some bonus free throws here uh, most of the second quarter if this keeps up, Ryan. Erlocker down and Campbell drops it, but it looks like that she, Lee was out of bounds when she saved it. So we'll go back to the Titans. And again, full court pressure right away. See, the, th the thing you really want to do against a full court man-to-man -man press is clear out after the inbounds. Nashville Cavill's hurting themselves by keeping three people in the backcourt and leaving three defenders back there to dribble through. Obermeyer with Henderson all over her. And Brinkman saves it. We're gonna have a, looks like we're gonna have a jump ball, possession arrow, Titans. So I'm, I'm gonna go on a limp, Peter, and say that this is uh, better than the first two games we've had combined. Oh, at the end of the first quarter in our first two games combined, the scores were eight nothing and four to two. So I would agree with you so far. So we got 59.1 seconds to go in the first quarter. Titans inbound on any thrown basket. Brink, Brinkman wants to smartly gets back out to Welt. Good pressure and defense there again by Lee. Nashville Oakville shooting a good percentage when they've gotten shots up so far. Nice They're pass from Brinkman to Welt and Welt in and out. 37 seconds to go. Henderson's got some room. Well, the rim is still consistent and uh, nice pass from Henderson to Lee and Ooh. Brink Frintels are not today. Lee gets her own rebound and throws it up. Brinkman, what a strong block. Especially coming from a 5-3 uh, guard there. Strong interior presence. And Erlocker takes the ball away from Renth and we're gonna have a jump ball possession arrow Bobcats. And the uh, seventh turnover there for the Titans. So 13.2 seconds to go in the first quarter. It should be tight. Welt, Welt's basket literally went all the way and in. I can't believe that didn't drop. How many times have we said that about the uh, far side rim so far in this game, or so far in this weekend? Kayla White can't convert, and that is how Good. the first quarter is going to be. But Good night, I Peter. What a first quarter of play. Eight to six is your score as the Bobcats from the number two seed Bobcats from Manuel Palantine are leading the Titans from National Oakville eight to six. A fun, fun first six minutes of action. Both sides, you know, had some highs, had some lows. Ebbs and flows, you know, that rhymed it unintentionally. Um, but I'd say, you know, we're gonna see a lot of consistent consistency in this game where it's gonna be a lot of pressure from Palantine. And if Nashville Oakville can handle the pressure, get into their half court set and go from there. They're shooting three of eight from the field. So when they've gotten through the pressure um, and haven't had a turnover of which seven they had in the first quarter, they're shooting pretty high percentage. It's just a matter of beating that pressure and getting into your half court set. On the other side, Palatine's done a good job of getting the ball inside. They've had five looks at the rim so far. They've only knocked down one of them, but you know, High percentage shots are eventually going to start falling at a higher percentage than one for five. So keeping keeping up and keeping uh, keeping consistent with going to the rim will be a key for them as well. We'd like to thank all those who are watching across the country. We've got we know we have listeners in uh, Macomb, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, Southern Indi Southern Illinois. You know, so we'd like to thank all of those following us. Also, feel free to follow Peter and I on Twitter, uh, Ryan Roth 411 and P Pete Roth 23. And right away, we're going to have a jump ball, possession arrow, Bobcats. So, well, more great defense there by Gloria Lee. Uh, she's done a wonderful job on the defensive end since she checked in midway through that first quarter. Speaking of that, did you unblock me yet on Twitter? No. And that's not, that's not changing. Worry about the game in hand, Ryan. Working down low to Campbell. Erlocker with the runner. Short on the shot, Renth with a rebound, and right away the, the the pressure picks up. Brinkman's got some room. <laughs> a rarity in this game so far. Someone handling the ball for Nashville. Yeah, we're room. gonna have a blocking foul on Erlocker. So Erlocker just picked up her first foul. Team's fifth. So five fouls on each side right now. Team fouls. So 5.31 to go in the second quarter. Renth gets into Brinkman. 
Brinkman takes it right at Urocker, and, Brink and Brinkman says, this is my time, and the game is tied at eight. I am thoroughly impressed by the, the Brinkman sisters so far early on in this game, Ryan. Lee works it down, shot's no good for Campbell, gets her own rebound, Lee with the runner, shot is no good, and it looks like the ball gets knocked away, and it's gonna stay with the Bobcats. Quiet start so far for Campbell, only has that one free throw. She's came into this averaging nine points a game, second leading scorer in the tournament for the team. Seeing if she can get going on the low block is definitely gonna be a key to Palatine's offense continuing the process. So Rachel Lynn checks back in with her two fouls. Lind to Henderson. Henderson thought about the three. Oh, and we're going to have a traveling violation as she goes down to one D. I like the one three one look there from the Titans. Good uh, good pressure on, on ball on, on the, around the arc and then good pressure down low, not giving Campbell any room to work with. So again, 8 8 is your score, 4.57 to go in the second quarter. Titans with the ball. Bobcats, as you'll see, continue to watch. Full court pressure the entire game. 24 minutes. 24 minutes of mayhem on the defensive end. So this is not the Nolan Richardson-led Arkansas. <laughs> that would be 40 minutes, and no. And we're going to have a traveling violation on rent. Good pressure on ball defense there by Erlocker, causing the turnover just by basically sheer determination at that point. Erlocker, who is hot early on, Erlocker throws it up, misses, but Campbell saves it. Somehow Lee gets the, gets the rebound. And Campbell continues to struggle from the floor. Gloria Lee, though, with the offensive rebound, and she's gonna go to the line for two. Gloria Lee has is one for four from the free throw line in this tournament. And there's a question on who the foul was called. It was called on number 30. Keegan Rent. So that's her first team six. So Bobcats in the bonus for the last four and a half minutes of this half, Peter. Well, it could come in, come in handy down the stretch for the Bobcats, the way they're rebounding. As the first one is up and a little off there from Lee. Uh, they're doing a great job crashing the boards, and fouls tend to come from second and third chance opportunities, whether it be a shooting foul or a foul on the rebound. And Lee converts on the second, allowing to pick up the full court pressure right away. Bobcats up 9 to 8, 428 to go in the second. Oh, and we're going to have an offensive foul on Obermeyer. And that's three on Obermeyer. Mm, including two player control fouls off inbounds plays. Which is a, a, a rarity, I'd say. Um, but so credit again to Bobcats defense. So, correction, Peter, it looks like they're saying that's the second on Obermeyer. Well, definitely a break there for the Titans. Just two fouls instead of three. It's tough, though. Uh, you know, you're facing 24 minutes of full court man on man defense. It's definitely frustrating. <laughs> frustrating to deal with for, as a player. Lee wide open for three, and she's got it. Gloria. <laughs> Lee, just like the song, <laughs> drills a three, and we're going to have a foul on Henderson. <laughs> Gloria, 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 Peter, no? Laura Brannigan, kind of St. Is, is it, it, was it the St. Louis Blues, or are the Bobcats getting a little of the St. Louis Blues? Uh, am I reaching here, Peter? I'm trying to, I'm trying to recollect my composure. Just, <laughs> just give me a second. So anyways, Gloria Lee had that huge three and pushes the lead up to four points now at 12 I mean, to eight. I said when she checked in, she's been a difference maker for the Bobcats all weekend and no different here. Four big points in this quarter and a big three right there. Great pass. <laughs> Brinkman up and uh, in and out. And we're gonna have a foul, we're gonna have a jump ball. Possession arrow tightens. Good court vision there by Obermeyer to find the open breakman on the block. Wasn't able to finish the layup, but hey, that, that's a good look. And, you know, Titans <laughs> have not had a lot of opportunities to get looks quite that open so far this game. At nice effort there by Campbell, knocking it out of bounds. Will stay with the Titans. 
apparently, Peter, the I was reaching, per uh, a couple text messages I've received, I was reaching with the Gloria song from St. Louis Blues, but uh, that was my, my mistake. Obermeyer gets the shot blocked, and we're going to have a we're going to have a scrum on the ground. We're going to have a traveling violation, and the ball will stay with the Titans. Eighth turnover for Palatine, and only the sh third shot attempt there for Nashville Oakville so far in this second quarter. Which I feel like has been a very long two minutes so far, and we're going to have a five-second violation on the Titans. I sound like a broken record, and I probably said it the last three years we've done the girls' games, though. This pressure from the Emmanuel Palatai defense just... So here, here's the difference. As you can see, the Titans players and coaches are losing composure with, well, with that's how this game... That's a, exactly why you run a full-court man-to-man press. Urlacher can't convert on the shot, and then right away, Lee forces Renth in the corner. Renth is trapped. Urlacher, oh, we're going to have a foul on Urlacher. So that's going to be Urlacher's second foul, team seventh. And free throws for Renth. So Renth's going to go to the free throw line for a one and one. But as I was saying, Peter, you know, Bob, the Bobcats have been have played in this game the last eight years. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's right. So the last eight years they have played in this game, they've won seven of them. In a situation like this, you know, the fans are excited, it's tense. You know, the officials were, you know, allowing them to play it a little bit more. Renth banks in the first free throw. The, uh, is, is the old National Bank open at uh, what three, four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon? They are not, but they oh. are the they are the proud sponsor <laughs> of this, this second quarter. <laughs> Renth makes both free throws. I I, I didn't want you to uh, miss your your plug after every bank shot we've seen so far today. You've been <coughs> right on it every time. So 12-10 is your score. 3:42 to go in the third quarter. You know, even with all the, the frustration by the Titans, Peter, they're only down by two. They're sticking with it. I mean, it's tough to shake a team that's 34 and two on the year, and Nashville Oakville is showing why they're 34 and two. Erlocker with the Euro step, mm. in, up in and out. Rebound is no good by Campbell, and it's going to stay. It's going to actually go off of Campbell, and it's going to go back to the Titans. Kaylee Campbell just hasn't been able to find the hoop yet this, this game so far. She's got another good look. She's doing a great job on the board. She's putting herself in great position to get opportunities. It just hasn't been able to finish yet. Obermeyer's able to get it. Obermeyer's pushing. They've got, they've got numbers. Obermeyer takes it on three people. Great board. And then block, strong block on Benning. And then Brinkman steals the ball away. And the Titans hold the ball to slow things down. Brinkman takes it up and good. Summer Brinkman now with eight points in this game, and the game is tied at 12. Where would the Titans be in this game so far without the Brinkman sisters? I mean, you know, it's 61 degrees outside, Peter. You think it's summer outside, but it's summer inside. Wow. I didn't think you would beat the uh, storm puns we heard from the fifth place game, and I stand corrected. <laughs> well done, sir. Nashville, Oakville, uh, and you see a turnover there from Henderson. Henderson overthrows Lee, Lee in the corner. Ten turnover of the game for Palatine. So credit Nashville, Oakville's half court, one three one zone defense for you know being as dis not as disruptive from the full court as Palatine's. Red, we're gonna have a oh, ball goes out of bounds. Rent kind of forces the pass and allowed Henderson to knock it out of bounds. It, so it's it's interesting to see the contrast in defensive styles. Both you know giving the same results so far of this game. Um, Nashville Oakville's fine playing a half court zone defense and you know, working from there, we're gonna see a foul on Lee on the drive into the front court. So Obermeyer does have to be careful of it, Peter. She is leaning in to the defender, uh, especially in that case. So she's, she's looking to draw the foul um, or looking for contact. That's a better analogy. Looking for looking, contact. She's looking yep. for contact. So Obermeyer's gonna go to the free throw line for one and one. So far this tournament, seven for 15 from the free throw line. Make that seven for 16. But Brinkman's able to get the offensive rebound. And Obermeyer for three, short on that. And Erlocker rips it away from Brinkman. And Henderson jumps all the way down to the block, makes the basket, and puts the Bobcats back up on top by two, 14 to 12. And we're gonna have a traveling bot. Oh, act correction, out she stepped bounds. out of bounds. 
it's kind of like a Wayne Larrabee analogy, you know, where uh, he jumps, you know, five yards in front of him. Fair. Henderson, who just made that huge basket, brings it back out. Henderson takes it right at Brinkman. We're going to have a foul on the floor. Um, so Summer Brinkman is going to pick up her second foul, and Frankie Henderson is going to go with the free throw line for a one and one. She's three for four from the free throw line so far in this tournament. She'll get, she'll get, go to, she'll have opportunity to extend the lead, and she does gets the friendly roll. She's got three points in the game, which is the lead at 15 to 12. Henderson converts both. And the Bobcats now up top, 16 to 12, 149 to go in the second quarter. So Samantha Brinkman brings it up with Henderson all over her, works around a rent. They're trying to work down low to Summer, who has eight points in this game. Henderson all over Brinkman, Watch almost gets a five second violation. Erlocker with the steal, and Erlocker's got room. Erlocker takes it right at Brinkman, up and good. Coco Erlocker now with six points and the lead is six at 18 to 12. Bit of a mini run here by Palatine to gain some uh, and, oh, answers and right Rep away. And says, I'm not ready to go home yet and cuts the lead back down to four at 18 to 14. Yes. And that poor pass right away, Brinkman with the steal. The momentum shifts Summer right back. Summer takes it right at White, in and out. Lee gets the rebound. And, and, they, and Henderson's got numbers in. Henderson almost travels. Erlocker can't miss it. And we're gonna have a foul on the shot. So looks like that foul is on number 23, Samantha Brinkman, her second foul team. Third foul. So that was the year, so instead of Oberon, so it's third foul on Brinkman, team's eighth. Campbell to the line for two. Campbell with seven rebounds in the game, no field goals. Misses the first free throw. One for three now from the free throw line this game. Notice a few folks from the Titans, Peter, have really just got that dry cough just at, <laughs> just at the time of the free throw. Just a coincidence. Merely a coincidence. I'm just hoping that their, their health's okay, especially during free throw attempts only. So she makes one of two, the lead's back up to five at 19 to 14. 48 seconds to go on the second quarter. Valentine's taken off the pressure here the last couple possessions, just meeting at half court now instead of going full court. And it's still doing this, having the same effect in the half court. Renth, who just drilled that big two on that side, long on the shot. Erlocker with the rebound, and Erlocker's pushing. 33 seconds to go. Erlocker takes it coast to coast, and then saves it by Campbell. And we're going to have a. Looks oh. like we're going to have a Bench warning. warning? So now, Peter, that's an inner, typically you don't give warnings when the team is on defense. <laughs> that's Usually it's dead balls, so stopping possession, I, that, I'm not sure if that is, is, if that's the... It's an interesting decision by the official. Generally, yes, you're right. It's either a dead ball or offense. And Lee, see a turnover with the poor pass, him. and Brinkman's taking the ball. Brinkman takes the shot, and she's gonna go to the free throw line for two. If it wasn't for Summer Brinkman, the Titans would, would still be at the hotel swimming, Peter. <laughs> she has eight of the team's 14 points. And that was actually, that was a huge foul as Frankie Henderson just picked up her third foul. These free throws are huge too. And <laughs> he knocks down with... Brinkman was one for nine from the free throw line in this tournament going into this. Only averaging four points a game in the tournament. And she now has nine points in this game. Make that 10. I don't know where the summer Brinkman was the last three days, but I'm happy that she came today. I I, think it must, it must be the weather, Peter. It's the weather. <laughs> the 60 degrees feels outside. Like outside. It feels like summer. Uh, Seven seconds to go. Erlocker down to Campbell. Campbell finally yeah. makes the field goal. And a big time. And the lead's no right back up to five. And that is how the first half ends. Huge, huge make there by Kaylee Campbell to go into halftime with a five point lead. You could kind of feel there with a few, few minutes to go in that second quarter, momentum was starting to shift to the side of the Bobcats. Summer Brinkman 
And Keegan Renth tried to cut that off, but Kaylee Campbell said, we're doing it anyway. And in the halftime, I feel like momentum is all on the side of Palatine. All right, so 21-16 is your score at the half. Uh, Peter and I will be back here and gosh, call it six minutes and 39 30. seconds or so, six minutes and 40 seconds uh, with some halftime stats. But uh, what, what a great first half of action so far, Peter. What a great half indeed. And we're back live at the half with the number two seed, Emmanuel Palantine leading the number one seed, Trinity, uh, excuse me, uh, Nashville Oakville Titans, 21 to 16. Leading scorers for the Bobcats. Very balanced scoring effort was Kaylee Campbell with four points, Gloria Lee with four points, Coco Erlocker with six points, Frankie Anderson with four points, and Kayla White with three points. And for the Nashville Oakville, it was Summer Brinkman with 10 points. Summer came into this game only with 11 points through three games, has 10 points in the first half alone. Keegan Renth added in four, and Raylan Obermeyer added in two. So again, Peter, we, we have a ball game, right? You know, the in the first half, I mean, it's it's only a five-point game. At, at, yeah, it's, you, it's a championship game. It's it's an excited crowd on both sides. It, and this is what we asked for in a championship game. Everything you could ask for in a championship game, everything you could ask for you know, in the nightcap of our weekend. But yeah, I, it's really come down to Palatine made a little bit of a run in the second quarter there. They find, they got a couple of turnovers and capitalized on fast break opportunities. We're able to you know create a little daylight and they've held on to it for now. That layup at the end of the second quarter by Kaylee Campo was really, really something they can build off of going into the second half. But yeah, both sides have played neck and neck so far this whole game. So the, the Titans, who had cut, came into this game with Raylan Obermeyer averaging nine points a game in the tournament, she had, was held to two points in the first half. Whereas on the other side, you know, you had Kaylee Campbell, who was leading the way for the, the, the Bobcats. She had four of nine, so she's kind of on pace. So we, we kind of knew between Kaylee with Coco Urlacher, it was going to be a lot. Coco Urlacher and Kaylee Campbell. And it really ha hasn't. It's been it, for the, both teams. It's been a very, especially the Bobcats, very balanced. The Titans. It's been a lot of Summer Brinkman. So again, that's kind of the trends how we saw the first half. And we'll see if those continue in the second. Quick shooting update. Uh, first half shooting stats: Nashville Oakville with six of 18 from the floor, 0 of three from deep, 33 percent, 12 turnovers on the other side. Palatine, six of 21 from the field, two of three from three though, which is you know the difference in this game basically at this point. Uh, with 11 turnovers. So turnovers are very even on both sides. Both defenses have done a, a good job of, you know, causing mayhem, causing disruptions, keeping both teams out of their rhythm offensively for the most part. See if that continues. Palatine took off the full court pressure there in the end of the second quarter. We'll see if they switch back to go full court man to man to start this third, uh, get back into uh, speeding up Nashville Oakville, or if they stay in that half court for a while. So starting the second half for the Bob Bobcats, number four, Frankie Henderson. Number 11, Coco Erlocker. Number 14, Rachel Lynn. Number 23, Rachel Roberts, who had just checked in the game, and 34, Kaylee Campbell. And for the Titans, number 20, Mallory Benning. Number 22, Raylan Obermeyer. Number 23, Samantha Brinkman. Number 34, Summer Brinkman. And 40, excuse me, 30, Keegan Renth. And right away, we have a steal, and Brinkman's pushing. Brinkman takes it all the way to the hall, in and out. And, but Benning follows the shot. Benning puts up and good. Mallory Benning did not make a basket in the first half. Her first basket's a big one as it cuts the lead to three at 21-18. Good patience by Benning there after she got the rebound. Kept the ball high, but took her time on the follow. Brinkman tries to knock the ball away. Gets it up to Roberts, who had just checked into the game. Roberts works it back. Next to Oakville trying to give uh, Palatine a little bit of their own medicine there with the full court pressure. And vice versa with Benning with the offensive board. That's Palatine did a lot. And poor pass, and Brinkman can't contain it. Come on, Rachel. So at the half, it seems you know the, the Titans are have come out excited, especially the intensity on defense where the Bobcats seem a little more frazzled. And just as I say that. <laughs> Henderson throws the ball out of bounds. 
Solid announcing work right there. Predictive. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you completely. The, ride. the second half, Nashville Oakville has looked like the more composed team for this first minute. Um, definitely a big big key for them is to start strong here and cut into the five-point lead and see if they can get a run going on their own. Brinkman thought about the three in the corner. Obermeyer to Benning down low, and we're going to have a traveling violation on Benning. Benning took an extra step as she tried to get the, as she tried to make the pass out to the three-point line. Really good extra pass there by Obermeyer rather than forcing up that running the runner in the lane. She found a little gap to feed Benning. Benning just took that extra step. Benning has had, has had Henderson takes a right at Benning, can't convert. Henderson gets her own rebound and then works it back out to Erlocker. Erlocker open for three, in and out. Again, Benning, Peter, who was quiet in the first half, already, already three rebounds in the second half already. She came to play this third quarter, which is really big for the Titans. Obermeyer with the off-balance shot. Summer Brinkman knocks out, and it's going to go back to the Bobcats. But right away, again, the, the, the Brinkman twins all, all over the Bobcats defensively right now. All sorts of pressure in that backcourt. I mean, even, if anything, it's making Palatine work just a little bit harder to get the ball across half court. And, and, and look just like that, Benning picks up the steal. Good pay dividends going into the fourth quarter as the game winds on. Oh, good move. Brinkman almost travels, is able to save it, works back to run. Again. Henderson all over Brinkman at the top. Renth made it, made one of those huge shots. Benning gets the offensive rebound. Works Renth. it back. Renth long on the shot. And we're going to have a foul on the floor. And it looks like that one's going to be on Benning. Is that on Benning? Yep, that's on Benning. So Benning picked up her second foul. Team's first. So Benning, Obermeyer, and Summer Brinkman all with two fouls for the Titans. Samantha Brinkman with three fouls. And still, even, even as we see another almost steal there by Brinkman. Uh, they, they can't do those cross-court pass. The Bobcats nope. can't do those cross-court pass, especially with, with, the Brink, with the Brinkmans yep. out there. Yeah, Nashville Oakville is reading them like a book on those cross-court passes. Again, though, the last possession, Mallory Benning still crashing the boards hard this third quarter, which is a trend you'd like to see if you're a Titan fan. Erlocker takes a right at Benning, gets it back out, and stolen away by Brinkman. Summer Brinkman's got, got taken one on four, and we're going to have a foul on the floor. And if that one is on number four, Henderson, that's four. That is on Henderson, Peter, and that's her fourth foul. Let's see Gloria Lee check back into the game. So Henderson's going to have to take out, take a step out probably for the next five, five minutes, give or take. I'd say we're going to on the four-minute mark in the fourth quarter. It'll be a safe place to put, a safe time to put it back in. So Renth working around a Brinkman. Lee all over Brinkman. Not a spot. Not a spot. You want to pick up your dribble there right against half And then Erlocker with the steal. And Erlocker wants to push. Erlocker then loses the ball. And now Obermeyer. Obermeyer is trying to take it, but smartly jump stops in and out. Cambly with the, the strong rebound. And we're going to have a Benning just run. Benning Erlocker run it. We're going to have a. Another, that Here, is five turnovers in this so, third quarter for Pelican. So I, I, I'm not exactly sure how that one ended up, but uh, I believe Black was touching the ball out of, out of bounds. bounds. I assume is the call they made. Either way, Nashville Oklahoma has the ball back with another chance to cut into this lead. <laughs> they scored on their first possession of this quarter, and no one scored since. And we're gonna have a we're gonna have a moving screen on Benning. It appears. So Benning now picked up her third foul, team second. Tough spot for a third foul. I, I it, not, not terrible. I mean, three fouls with eight minutes to go in the game isn't the worst case scenario, but could come into play here if Benning picks up another one quick. And then again, full court pressure picked up. Uh, Glory Lee was able to save it. I mean, your yeah. primary ball handler's out and Frankie Henderson too. So. Erlocker, is, Erlocker takes it right at Benning. In and out. Erlocker gets her own rebound. 
gets it back out. Only the third shot so far put now up by Nava. Blocking foul on Benning. And that's where that moving screen comes into play. So Benning now just picked up her fourth foul. So Benning with four for the Titans. Henderson with four and on the Bobcats. Titans are gonna go four, five guards here now. So we'll see if. Oh, if what if, an inbound Just play. as I said that, I was gonna say, we'll see if, if they're able to, to focus in on Campbell with Benning on the bench and the lead's back up to five at 23 to 18. Found the gap in the zone and camped out there. Easy as that. And the ball gets knocked away off of Obermeyer and it goes back to the Bobcats. 15th turnover for the Titans. Pretty even still turnover, 17 to 15 so far. So not really a differentiator in this game at the moment. And then, and then right away, Brinkman almost steals it away. But as you know, Peter, you see that more when there's full court pressure on both sides. More, you know, a lot of, yeah. like, especially the frenetic pass. Pace. You're you're gonna you're gonna see more turnovers than you would typically see than a team that runs more of a set offense. Sure, and that's exactly what Palatine wants. This is the game they want to play, and Nashville Oakville's not doing a bad job of keeping up with it. You know, now they've picked up. Earlock takes it one on three in and out, but gets her own rebound, and the ball gets knocked away, and oh, Rents no. able to grab it, and Rents uh, smartly oh. slows things down. And Brinkman takes it right up in and out. Urlacher with another rebound, and we're going to have so, somehow Welt, and we're going to have a, we're going to have a foul on the floor on Campbell as she runs through a screen. This <laughs> there there has been a there has been a lot of contact in this game, Peter. Physical on, game on, on both sides, and we're going to have a foul on the floor on Gloria Lee. I, I expected this coming in, I'll, Ryan. I mean, this is, this is consistent with what we've seen before. So Gloria Lee just picked up her third foul, team's third. Brinkman beats Lee Brinkman there. goes right at Erlocker. And it, the ball gets knocked away. Roberts knocks away and it's gonna stay with the Titans. 108 to go in the third quarter. Bobcats up five, 23 to 18. Both sides defensively have really picked it up here in the third quarter. Only four total points Brinkman scored. Brinkman takes it right at Erlocker in and out. Good, good luck there for, for Brinkman. And Erlocker out of control and then gets the ball whistled. And we're actually having a jump ball. You're up five points at this point. You, you don't need to take out one on three at that point. It's never really a good time to go one on three, uh, especially as you said with the lead. Uh, five. I really think this, this comes back to, you know, your primary ball handler and Frankie Henderson is out with four fouls. No one's there to set up the offense, calm down the offense. It's just a lot of fast pace back and forth we've seen since number four checked out. Obermeyer, want, we're going to have a blocking foul on number 23, Roberts. So that's her first foul, team's fourth. Definitely not as much scoring as we had in the second quarter, Peter. We had 23 points in the second quarter between the two teams. We're at four in the third quarter. Defenses picked it back up. And Roberts knocks it away. It's going to stay with the Titans. 41.4 seconds to go in the third quarter. Seen these inbounds plays be quite, quite challenging to get in against and the Battle Titans. And a poor pass. And, bo let's go, Rachel, let's go. and it's going to go right back to the Bobcats. Nothing decided in this third quarter so far. Even between both sides, we're still the five point And then gap. Roberts, then Brinkman, she, she, telegraphed the pass, missed the layup. That would have cut the lead into three. Campbell gets back out to Erlocker. Erlocker, then we're gonna have a blocking foul. Uh, it looks like that one's gonna be on number 23. So, uh, Samantha Brinkman, and that's going to be Samantha Brinkman's fourth foul. So Benning and Brinkman both with four fouls apiece. Erlocker to the line for two. Erlocker converts on the first. The lead is up to six at 24 to 18. So checking in the game for the Titans is number 42, Nora Wood. 
So 19.6 seconds ago, Coco Erlocker with seven points in this game, leading the way for the Bobcats. She misses the second. Rebound by Summer Brinkman. And down, down six points, Summer Brinkman's pushing. Big possession here for Nashville Oakville. They need a bucket. Welt with the long two in and out, but she, nobody boxes out Welt. Campbell knocks the ball out of bounds and he'll stay with the Titans. So 24-18, 8.5 8 seconds to go in the third quarter. Work it back to Obermeyer. Obermeyer open for three in the corner, off the front of the rim. And it, so, nobody, Summer Brinkman tracks down the rebound. One second left, Renth at the buzzer, off the, off the side. Good job, good job. But wow, what, what a difference. What a difference of a quarter between the second and third quarter, Peter. The second quarter was high intensity offense. The third quarter was defense. High intensity defense. You are spot on with that analysis, right? We saw two made field goals against 18 attempts in that quarter between the two teams. One point difference from where we were at at halftime. You know, Nashville Oklahoma had a lot of opportunities to start that third quarter to cut in the lead, you know, scoring on their first possession to cut it back to three. And then starting the quarter with six or seven straight defensive stops, they just couldn't get another basket. Credit to Palatine's defense again, as we've said all game for their, you know, hands on, in your face defense anywhere on the court. It's been impossible for Nashville Oakville to get into a rhythm. And they really need to find that rhythm soon now, Ryan, with only six minutes to go down six. So again, 24 18 is your score. Fans now kind of on their feet, Peter. Six minutes ago of the, of the 2020 Illinois Lutheran State Basketball Tournament. You could cut the tension with a knife. Heck, I think you can cut the tension with a fork. Right, Bobcats with the ball to start off the fourth quarter. Roberts, who did start, has played a lot of minutes with Henderson on the bench. They work down low. A basket is good for Kaylee Campbell. Campbell now with eight points, and the lead is eight at 26 to 18. Obermeyer, who's been, again, the team's leading scorer, really needs to kick it into gear right now if they're going to come back. And as I say that, we're going to have a turnover by the Bobcats and by the Titans. And Erlocker takes it one on three. And again, you're up eight points. Why, why, are, why are you taking the ball? You, you need to bring the ball back around. You just need to slow things down and... Get in. I, obviously, Palatine likes to go fast, both defensively and offensively, but here, as you said, know the situation. As we have a referee discussion here on what the what the call is for the out-of-bounds. But yeah, know the situation. Know you can bring the ball back out. Odds are not high in a one-on-four, one-on-three. So we're going to see the ball stay with Palatine instead. And I need to cross out a turnover tally mark. So the ball stays with nobody guards Lind in the corner for a three. Long on the shot, and we're going to have over the back call on number 34, Kaylee Campbell. So her second foul, team's fifth. So the Titans get the ball back, down eight. Need to get something going quick here offensively. You're running out of time, and an eight-point deficit against this Palatine defense feels like 18. So even with Obermeyer there, when they collapsed on, you know, she had one on three. Someone out, I mean. Someone's open. Someone's open. Yeah. So Summer Brinkman is, is attacking. There again, three people collapsing. Somebody's got to be open. Lee all over Samantha Brinkman. Brinkman with the runner off the rim. Strong rebound by Campbell. And they're going to they're gonna up. Roberts can't convert the layup. Gets her own rebound. Gets it back out to Lynn. And we're going to have a foul on the floor. So that's going to be, it looks like, number 22. So that's going to be Obermeyer's third. So Obermeyer has three. Benning and Samantha Brickman at four. So three people with foul trouble for the Titans. Lynn catches, catches the pass. But both teams at five fouls apiece right now. Erlocker with the layup, can't finish. Obermeyer with the rebound. Obermeyer trying to put the team on her back. Takes it all the way. And... A lot of contact on the call, it doesn't get it. Benning with the rebound, we're gonna have a foul on, it looks like that's gonna be on number 34, Campbell. No correction, that's gonna be on 23, Rachel Roberts. 
So Benning, who had to set out a lot of the third quarter with her fourth foul, is going to go to the line for two. Benning misses the first. Three for six from the free throw line in this tournament. She's now three for seven. Came in this game averaging six points a game in the tournament with a game high of 10. She's got 2.7 rebounds today. Misses both free, free throws. Urlacher's got the rebound, and Urlacher doesn't need a push. She smartly brings the back out, ball, ball back out this time. 4.28 to go. And again, the, the Bobcats have an eight-point lead. They don't, nobody picks up Lee. Lee with the runner and pushes the lead up to 10 at 28 to 18. That's a perfect shot to take with an eight-point lead there, Ryan. No one was in front of Lee, and she had a layup, basically. Yeah, otherwise, no, I agree with you. Renth with a long two. She's made one of those already today. Misses that. Lynn tracks down the rebound, and Lynn takes a one on two, misses the shot, gets it, and then just what a sloppy save. passing, but somehow saved back to the Bobcats. Great save there by Roberts. <laughs> Keeps possession alive for the Bobcats. 3.50 to go in the fourth quarter. 28-18 is the lead for the Bobcats. And we're going yes. to have a lot of contact there. That's five. And it looks like Mallory Benning, who really played very tough early on in that third quarter. We, she had three rebounds in that third quarter, and then she picked up two quick fouls that got put her in foul trouble. And, you know, it might have been a different story if Benning wasn't in foul trouble in that second half when well, the game was close. I'll start it with that moving screen midway through the third quarter and picking up the block and foul right after. But, yeah, it threw off all the momentum they had starting that third quarter. And since that point, it's been a 7-0 Palatine run. Erlocker is going to take it at Obermeyer, and Obermeyer is going to get whistled for her fourth foul. Again, 3.42 to go in the game. Erlocker to the line for two. She's got seven points, three for four from the free throw line in the game. Misses the first. So the other thing to keep in mind, Peter, neither team has called a timeout yet in this game. Even with, even with Palatine going on this big run, Coach Renth hasn't called a timeout. Yeah, I mean, definitely could use one here to reset the offense, and you see a turnover like there. <laughs> yeah, reset Lee. the offense to avoid something like that. Lee takes it up and good. Gloria Lee now with eight points in the game, just as I was saying that. Full timeout. Titans. But really, I mean, like I was saying, that neither team had, 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 especially when things were really starting to get uh, tightened up, you know, with, 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 the, with the pressing. And with, I mean, we saw that one series, there was five turnovers on that one possession alone. Right. So if there's still time left for the Titans, it's 13, they're down 13 with 3.25 to go in the fourth quarter. It's getting, it's what are they going to do? I think, I mean, you look at the tournament so far. Raylan Obermeyer, one of the leading three-point shooters in the tournament. So she's at, she's, she has six three-point, heck, she only has one two-pointer made in this tournament. So six three-pointers made, and she has one field goal in this game. So if they're going to come back, they're going to have to start getting some shots off quick. I agree, and they have not yet she's hit her. Yeah, I got no. Yeah, no, from, for your point, they do need to start finding a rhythm offensively, and if the three-pointers are there, taking them. Easier said than done against the Bobcat defense, but that and, you know, forcing turnovers on the defensive end are basically... We're going to have a, a foul, foul on Urlacher. Urlacher. Again, yeah. especially with, with the, the Titans being a bonus, that it wasn't anything they needed at that point, because they'll just allow... Yeah, time, chance for, the game. Chance for points. So Samantha... One of the lean scorers for the Titans. Two for 12. For Misses the first. Rebound by Campbell. And, and just like that, the Titans have missed their last four free throws in this game. And the lead's back up to 13. Well, yep. that, 
that last foul, what, what, looks like was on Earl Ecker. That was her third. Yep. Well, and this is great work by Palatine offensively. Now, as you have mentioned, it's for like the last five minutes of the game. They don't need to force anything. Now they have a lead. Working against the 1-3-1 one, one zone, forcing the Titans to get out of the zone and you know match up man-to-man -man is really all they need to do here. And they're doing a good job of moving the ball and forcing the Titans to D up. Erlocker decides to take it anyways. And Erlocker with her 10th point of the game, the lead's up to 15 at 33 to 18. And that's the exact look you want. We see the three starting, starting from Nashville, Oakville. Um, but that, that's the exact look you want if you, oh, good steal and there. steal, Samantha Brinkman up, misses the layup. Henderson with the rebound. You know, the Titans have had some chances, like four layups in the second half once they've been able to get, break that pressure. Yeah, three or four layups. It could have definitely changed the course of this game from a momentum standpoint. And another nice extra pa pass. One extra pass to Erlocker in and out. Summer Brinkman's able to gra grab the rebound. And Summer, who had 10 points in the first half, hasn't scored yet. We're going to have a... So checking in the game for the Bobcats is number 52, Christina Turney. And we're going to have another full timeout for the Titans. Well, Kaylee Campbell checks out eight points, a ton of rebounds. She so Campbell left the game. C Campbell checks out of the game, finishing with eight points, ten rebounds. Well, yeah, it, it, uh, quietly she played a major factor in this game. Really, I, I'd say she was, you know, at her average for the tournament. She averaged nine points a game so far during the tournament. She's right there with eight. Did a great job on the defensive side. You know, uh, deflecting shots, causing chaos in the middle. Um, she did a good job guarding Benning. Benning was, you know, held the two points for when she was in. She did a great job with the board. So if you look at the Titans, you know, I would be surprised if these are not the two teams in the championship game next year, too. The Titans are extremely young, starting with, with the Brinkman sisters both being fifth graders. And, and we're going to have a... Brinkman knocks the ball to bound. Yeah, a lot of talent coming back. You have Lexi Welt as a seventh grader. And, but again, with Br Brinkman both being fifth graders, Again, pull for 140 to go in this fourth quarter. Definitely. Bobcats up 15. That's something to build around. And on the other side, we're going to have a traveling violation on the Bobcats. Eddie Luna had just checked in the game for the Bobcats. Checking back in for the Titans is number 42, Nora Wood. So gotta, 133 like, to go. Got to go now if you're in Nashville, Oakville. Need a lot of points and a little amount of time. <laughs> Threes need to start falling. They're going to... Obermeyer, again, the lead three-point shooter, and finally oh, gets one. Raylan Obermeyer now with five points in the game, her first three of the game, and the lead is down to 12 now at 33-21. That basically is the recipe for success. That Nashville Oakland has to follow the rest of this game. Get a stop defensively, get a turnover defensively, somehow get the ball back quickly and knock down threes. It's only a four, four position game. You need four more threes in the span of 80 seconds. So full court, you'll see full court pressure picked up right away. Both teams are in fun. So again, do you, do you try to extend the game at this point, down 12 with a minute 18 to go? I mean, I, I, I think it's an option. You, you've done well with your pressure full court so far. You've caused quite a few turnovers. Uh, Peloton has 20 turnovers in the game due in part to the pressure the Titans have put on. Use that. See if you can get a couple quick steals, you know, a couple easy buckets here and there to cut this down to a single digit game with, you know, 40, 45 seconds to go. Go from there. So Obermeyer just picked up her. So Obermeyer and Samantha Brinkman, Brinkman, Sam Brinkman, both have four fouls. So those are two that actually Sam Brinkman is not in the game currently. But again, Obermeyer is the only one with four fouls on the court. So they don't want her to pick up the foul. Henderson throws it up to Erlocker. Ooh, almost the steal they were looking for, and that's going to be. And there is going to be your fifth foul on Obermeyer. So that's going to be Obermeyer, you know, one of the lean scorers in the tournament, especially for the Titans. Was at average nine points a game in the tournament. Finishes up her, her career. Now again, they, they will they have they have the state tournament in two weeks. So that this the, you know this is 
finishing this, the, I'm sorry, they have the national tournament in two weeks. So finishing the state tournament up, second place more than likely, is not, is not something to put your head on. Great effort all season long for the Titans. Right you are, second place is nothing to hang your head about. So the Titans to get the ball down 12. 33 to 21, 108 to go in the fourth quarter. They got the stop they were looking for in that possession where they were like missing the, three, the free throw. Now they need to go offensively and find a look. And then Brinkman, need, they need to get a shot off 55 seconds to go. Well, it works at Renth. The defense is making it awful hard to get an open look, though. Renth, Renth, Renth did have... Brent didn't make a long two-pointer in the first half. Missed the shot. No good. And a rebound by Turney, who had just checked in the game. And we're going to have a foul on number 34, Summer Brinkman. Well, it looks like Palatine is getting, getting some players. A little playing time here to end the game. So we're going to have a timeout, Titans. So checking in the game for the Bobcats, number one, Cassidy Rowe, number five, Grace Reichert, number 44, Anya Ruppel, number, let's see, so again, 35 seconds to go, Bobcats looking for another state championship game, up 12. But I think, you know, the Titans are a new power. This is their third, uh, their, the last three years, they have finished top four in the last three years. Two, no, no, they, they, they 18, definitely. they lost in the championship. Last year, they, they played in the, they played in the third and fourth place game. And this year, they're losing the championship again. Definitely a lot, a lot of talent in that program. And they've done a great job these last three years, you know, competing. Just, Unfortunately, they've run into the buzzsaw as we see Erlacher knock down the first free throw. The buzzsaw that is Emmanuel Palatine. And again, I feel like we've, we've said this a few times in our prior broadcast, the Palatine defense was just, just enough and their offense you know, came to play the second half. That was the difference. Coco Erlacher checks out of the game with 12 points. And most of them, I mean, she only had, she had were from the free throw line. Mm -hmm. She did a good job knocking down her Six opportunities. Six for nine from the free throw line in the game. Brinkman works around to Brinkman. And S S Summer Brinkman fighting hard. N nice basket is good by number 42, Nora Wood. And we're going to have one more timeout for the Titans. Mainly for substitutions here. It looks like number two, McKenna Westland will check in the game. Number 25, Christina Gossman. And number 35, Madison Gogolek. So full timeout, 24 seconds ago. Even though we, you know, we were hoping for, especially with how that first half was, a close to finish the game, everybody got to play to finish it off, Peter, in this championship game. Right. Right. There's no no reason to go home, you know, because again, you have the national tournament, national championship in two weeks. Yep. And based on how Il Illinois has done over the last, gosh, many years of just success. Success. You look at Mount success. Prospect, you know, the last couple of years. Um, Palatine. Palatine. <laughs> and it, 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 there's no reason both these two teams can't go down to the wire. In, that state, in the national championship here in a couple weeks at Felpo. Sure, no, I agree completely. I, I, there's a lot of potential, a lot of talent on both sides of this game. Um, like we said earlier, Nashville Oakville has nothing to hang their heads on. They've played an outstanding weekend of basketball. They just came up a little short in this game. Palatine, you know, Palatine's been here before, been here, you know, every year it seems like, and they were just, you know, up to the task in that second half. But you, you're right, no, the national tournament's a lot to look forward to, and both these teams could definitely, you know, make their presence felt in that tournament. We're going to have a foul on McKenna Westland. So number 22, Georgia Rowe, had just checked in the ball game. We'll go to the free throw line for two as they're in double bonus. So 21 seconds to go. Bobcats up 12. Misses on the first free throw. So Georgia Rowe, this is her free, first free throw attempts of the tournament. Line violation looks like on number five, Grace Reichert. So second free throw is no attempt. So 21 seconds to go. 
Welt will bring it up. And Welt, Welt is someone that is going to get a lot of minutes next year for the bot, for the Titans as a seventh grader. Definitely going to help the team next year out a lot. Along with the Brinkman sisters. Eight, eight, eight seconds goal. Westland is going to get fouled on the shot. So Kenna Westland, who had just checked in the game, hasn't hasn't scored yet in this tournament. She's going to go to the free throw line for two. So that last foul was on number 44, Anya Ruffel. Off the back rim on the first. Six seconds to go in the game still. And the best part about this is that our uh, weekend of basketball is not quite yet over. Still got a big game after this, too. The Bobcats from Manuel Palantine play it, and she yeah. makes it. Kind of Wesleyan jumping for joy after making that free throw, and we're going to have a traveling violation. What? Well, kind of uh, Wesleyan get, getting into the score the scorebook for the tournament. Awesome moment here to end for Nashville Oakville. So awesome five, five seconds ago, they're going to try to set up for a one last shot for her. A little short on the shot, the ball gets knocked away, and there it is. Your 2020 Illinois State Basketball Champions, the Bobcats from Emmanuel Palatine. They are now the five-time defending champions of the state of Illinois. And they definitely earned every bit of that today, right? Nashville Oakville was a tough, tough opponent, and Palatine was up to the task, and they'll be going home with the championship banner. So leading scorers for the winning pit, the Bobcats. Coco Erlocker finished the game with 12 points. Kaylee Campbell finished up with eight. Glory Lee added eight. Frankie Henderson added in four, and Kayla White added in three. And for the Titans in defeat was Summer Brinkman with 10 points. Raylan Obermeyer added in five. Keegan Renth added in four. Mallory Benning and Nord Wood added in two. And Kenna Wesselin added a point. But wow, what it, what a, what a finish to that game for the Bobcats. Your 2020 Illinois grade school state championship. But again, what, what a great week of basketball, P Peter. We'll uh, just... Great fun as always. Great fun as yeah, always. Great and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back here next year. And uh, let's go down to PA Dress announcer Jim Carroll with uh, the girls' awards. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please congratulate both teams as they played an excellent ball game today. Today is Championship Sunday. And before we meet the teams one more time and pass out trophies and medals, would you please join me in thanking our gracious hosts, St. Peter Arlington Heights, Trinity Roselle, St. John Lombard, and Emmanuel Crystal Lake. Additionally, would you please join me in thanking the members of the board of directors and the committee members, and you can identify us as we're all wearing the red shirts. Thank you guys so much. The award presentation will follow this type of outline. We'll handle the second place trophy, then the second place medallions, then we'll recognize our champion with the trophy, game ball, banner, medallions, and then we'll go to the all tournament team, and last we'll go to the sportsmanship award. So here we go. Going home in the second place in the state of Illinois, would you please congratulate with me the Titans from Nashville, Oakville.
At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you um, Andy Fritz, a member of the Board of Directors and the Chair of the Girls' Division of this tournament. Mr. Fritz. At this point, we'll award our second place medallions for the Titans. Number two, McKenna Westland. Number 20, Mallory Benning. Number 22, Raylan Obermeyer. Number 23, Samantha Brinkman. Number 25, Christina Guzman. Number 30, Keegan Renth. Number 32, Lexi Welt. Number 34, Summer Brinkman. Number 35, Madison Gogolak. Number 42, Nora Wood. Principals, Amy Kurtz and Dr. Dennis Franker, Francer. Athletic Directors, Sean Renth and Joe Kirby. And also Head Coach, Joseph Kirby and Sean Renth and Assistant Coach, Dylan Fullerton. For the 15th time in the history of this tournament, would you please congratulate with me the Bobcats from Emmanuel Palatine. Coaches, please come forward, receive your game ball. And of course, Bobcats, I think you have a few of these hanging in your gymnasium, your championship banner. There will be plenty of opportunities later for all the good pictures next door in uh, Hoops Fest. And now, let's meet the Bobcats. Number one, Cassidy Rowe. Number four, Frankie Henderson. Number five, Grace Reichert. Number 10, Brooklyn Luna. Number 11, Coco Erlacher. Number 12, Kayla White.
Number 13, Gloria Lee. Number 14, Rachel Lind. Number 21, Eddie Luna. Number 22, Georgia Rowe. Number 23, Rachel Roberts. Number 34, Kaylee Campbell. Number 44, Anya Rupel. And number 52, Christina Tierney. Principal, Delane Schistel. Athletic Director, Diane Henderson. <laughs> Head Coach, Heather Glazer. <laughs> Assistant Coach, T.R. Turner. Assistant Coach J.R. Beckley. What's next? All tournament? All tournament? All tournament. Okay. At this time, we will announce the all tournament team. Uh, members of the board of directors and the basketball committee have watched all the games this weekend and evaluated all of the players and participants and we have 15 members on our all tournament team and then from those 15 one will be selected for the MVP award all right these are in no particular order from Nashville Oakville Samantha Brinkman <laughs> From Rockford Lutheran, Kaylee Bankus. From Peoria, Joanja Smith. From Palatine, Frankie Henderson. From Bloomington, Grace Grotkin. From Mount Prospect, Kristen Wentling. From Edwardsville, Ellie Neath. From Palatine, Kaylee Campbell.
From Rochelle, Olivia Henkel. From Nashville, Oakville, Raylan Obermeyer. From Mount Prospect, Maya Hulsman. From Rockford, Hannah Morgan. From Peoria, Elias Spratling. From Palatine, Coco Erlock. from Lombard, Gabrielle Walton. And the 2020 girls MVP from Emmanuel Palatine, Frankie Henderson. Our final award for this presentation for the girls' tournament is our sportsmanship awards, one that we take very seriously here at the Lutheran Sports Association. You've seen banners in many of our gyms saying players play, refs ref, and fans cheer. And we just want to recognize the school that we believe showed the uh, best sportsmanship throughout the weekend. The winner of the 2020 Sportsmanship Award for the Girls State Tournament are the Comets from St. Paul Mount Prospect. Just as a reminder, once we uh, present the Sportsmanship Award, all pictures, our official tournament photographer, Mr. Bill Brockschmidt, will be next door taking all of the official pictures of all the teams. So if you're here for pictures, go ahead and head next door so we can get prepared for the boys' championship game. Thank you.